the 2021 Purvich Commencement Ceremony. My name is Rebecca Bullen and I am the Assistant Principal and Chair of Studio Arts. This year has been coined as unprecedented one. Honestly, that word has been used way too much. We have all learned new ways of being in life and education, teaching and learning. It's been an unusual year. In that light, I ask you to join me in acknowledging all the hard work our staff and teachers have created to support our Purpich seniors in making it to this day. Our teachers have worked hard to find ways to connect, engage, deliver academic and arts curriculum. And with their hard work, learning and creativity continued. Please welcome our amazing Purpich faculty and staff. <laughs>
An unusual year in teaching and an unusual year in learning. The class of 2021 has persevered. From shy, nervous junior to the self-aware senior who projects their voice that much louder, who has more intent and trust in the brush stroke, the line, the form they make, the photo they take, the dance they create, the story they write, the song they sing, or the act they perform. Despite distance learning, a week here, two weeks online, they have persevered. Please welcome the class of 2021. <laughs> has its challenges. Running a state agency that is also a public school and during a pandemic presents all new challenges. Our executive director has worked countless hours behind the scenes sorting through legislative policies and procedures, safety plans, and budgets and state mandates. Necessary and important work. In my eyes, just as important, he asks questions of our community and shows compassion and empathy for staff, students, and families. He cares about the school and the people who make up our Perpich community. Please welcome Perpich Executive Director, Dr. Charles Rick. Welcome. Welcome members of the 2021 class at Perpich High School family members, faculty, staff, Chair Linda Brobeck, Board of Directors, Principal Con McCartan, and Assistant Principal Rebecca Bullen. It is an honor to be part of the 2021 ceremony at Perpich High School and the Perpich Center for Arts Education. Graduation is recognized as an important step in the lives of this year's graduating class. No one could have imagined this past year with all the changes and problems brought about by the COVID-19 pandemic. We made it through the year. You made it through the year. It was not easy and something all of us will remember for a long time. Words are hard to find to describe this school year. I can only imagine the stress you went through in completing your senior year at Perpich High School. In part, your success is due to the dedication and hard work the staff did on a daily basis, not knowing if we were going to be in distance learning, hybrid learning, or in-person learning, or a combination. More importantly, I commend you for sticking with us and making necessary changes to get to today. I want to thank the parents for all your support in the ups and downs your child experienced these past months. I want to think at the end of the day, we are all better off having lived through this experience. Finally, I encourage you to follow your dreams and hopes as your presence at Perpich High School helps set a tone for future students. Thank you and congratulations, students. Thank you, Dr. Rick. I have been a part of the Perpich community for 11 years. As you know, it's a special place. I shared with seniors yesterday that as we started a year of school in hybrid, I was concerned that distance would impact community. They proved that wrong. They have held themselves up when, and when that was not attainable, those around them stepped in and assisted with support. Today's student speaker is a perfect example of the positivity and stepping up. Online or in the hall, Savannah Ferreira is a beacon of kindness, intellect, and compassion. 
serving on the student leadership team, co-creating a student magazine in the middle of a pandemic, and one of two seniors in the literary program, she advocates for creativity, expression, and connection. I always feel better in her presence. Please join me in welcoming the senior class of 2021 speaker, Savannah Ferreira. Hello. I'd like to thank you all for being here friends and family, to witness and celebrate the end of a journey for this year's soon-to-be graduates. We are delighted that you came to the Purpich graduation for the class of 2021, whether through the streaming service or here in the audience. And I'd also like to give a special thank you to all the Purpich teachers with us here today who have helped us come so far. We couldn't have done it without any of them. Not without Amy's pre-recorded lessons she put hours into making, and not without Craig's contagious joy for the beauty of art. Not without Bob's groovy charisma, or without Joao's supportive manner, and certainly not without Pickerel's daily morning jokes. They are the foundation for this place of freedom, because that's what Purpich is. Purpich is artistic freedom, where we, artists of all different forms, come together to express ourselves as we find our place in the world around us. We are Purpich, all of us and each of us. Graduates from 20 years ago, graduates from last year, and us today. Now, if you wear that dedication necklace in public, you're bound to meet one of them. I met a literary graduate in a ragstock at Uptown, and she was kind enough to give me a discount. And I've heard stories of people getting into Valley Scare for free because the employee recognized the Purpich pendant. Of course, Purpich is much more than saving a couple bucks at lucky times, but it's about that immediate respect for someone else because of a community shared. When we applied here, regardless of our nerves during the auditions and the interviews, we chose to embrace ourselves, our artistic power, and a hope for an unknown future. We wrote our stories, recorded or wrote music or a monologue or a dance, and submitted artwork with the intention of taking our skill and soaring with it. And now here we are, about to fly. And even though we were separated this year, Purpich was not. We were together even though we weren't. Art is a power that transcends physical boundaries. As we sat in our rooms dealing with connection issues and forgetting to unmute ourselves, we were still communicating and we were still creating and discovering. Cameras on or cameras off, we were still there and many of us were constantly fighting the urge to lay in bed all day and sleep the pandemic away. There were many struggles to overcome this year. Wi-Fi outages and fuzzy screen screens, screaming audio feedback, and laptops losing their battery in the middle of class. We lost the sociability that we always thought we'd have. We were physically alone for a large part of our year, our only com communication being mostly through that screen. Yet, here we are, together, at the finish line. If we have the strength to overcome this, I'm sure that we can handle what life will become in the future. I am sure that we will grow with it and adapt to it. As artists, it is our right to take the world, to perceive it, to understand it, and work to change it. Sometimes, like this year, they are quiet fights, fought in the home. And also, like this past year, some fights can only be won together through assembly of the people to demand social justice, equality, or freedom. Returning seniors, we had the opportunity to experience Purpich in its pre-pandemic state, 
without hardly any space between us at all. I sometimes find that I mourn the experiences we may have had. I miss what could have been move-in day when we all ate food under the shade of the trees and met each other for the first time. I miss what could have been another bagel day. Last year, Khan must have bought out all of Panera's produce for the day and brought it here to Perpich. We celebrated bagel day, of course, by eating all those tasty bagels, but we also played a bagel kahoot and recited bagel odes. I miss that we won't be throwing a junior into the pond this year to keep their tradition alive. Yet, I urge us all today to not dwell. COVID-19 could not disconnect Perpich, though it forced that space between us. Art exists where you are. Art exists in that powerful place, in the very core of you. And I can only hope that for all of you, Perpich has only strengthened that ability and that passion. That your art is like a flower inside that always blooms. And to all the new seniors, know that you are strong. To leave the place you were during that time of unknowing and fear. To change schools so close to the end and experience a year distant in a community foreign. And to thrive regardless. Perpich was a safe space, both online and on campus. And I'll bet Carol, our guidance counselor, isn't like the other ones you've had at your previous schools. Now, she made all of us, lovingly of course, come to her office for a senior meeting or through Google Meet so that she could get to know you, to help you find your future, and because she wants you to feel that safety. She, among all the other welcoming staff and students, hope that you have felt just as much home here as the rest of us. Be proud of the work that you have done here one year or two. You have fallen sick and you've gotten better. You've succeeded and you've failed. You've lost friends and you've made friends. The future is wide before us and with it let's keep creating, let's keep communicating and let's keep discovering because there is no end to art. There is no end to the power that it holds. Our lives are ahead of us, and we can leave this chapter of our story knowing that endings are really just new beginnings. And we can take all that we have learned from Perpich, the teachers, our classmates, and ourselves, and continue to build on what we have created here. You are powerful as an artist. Congratulations, class of 2021. We made it. Safford is our only senior from dance this year, and she graduated just a little bit earlier. Dance as an art can exist by itself, but often it thrives as a collective. Dancing through a screen in cramped kitchens and furniture crowded areas proved difficult, but these dancers were strong in these times of struggle by supporting and lifting each other up. As a group, Mira and six new juniors choreographed a piece for us today each dance inspired by a single word. Mary Harding, the dance teacher, is at the heart of this production, and I've often heard her say, to look with love. That gesture and statement alone tells you what Mary strives to be as a teacher. And feast your eyes on their masterpiece. Thank you. 
This year, my friend Kepler and I are the only seniors in Lit. We've both been so grateful to have Shannon as our teacher. She has a power with words and with it has taught us how to write with a certain brilliance that's still true to our own style. Our performance today is a combined poem written, written separately about what lit means to us. The first line is Kep's, the second line is mine, the third is Kep's, and so on. Kep, come up here. <laughs> One thing to know before hearing it is that the lit group last year had class in room 201. And right next door is the lit loft, a blue painted room with comfy cushions, big windows, and words all over the walls. This year, the lit group walked over to the Gaia building, which is to the left of Perpich. When on campus, we were in a room we call the glass box, because it's completely made of windows. In a way, we never left Perpich, because the lit loft is its own little glass box. And coincidentally, that room in the Gaia building is also a room 201. This poem is called Back Into the Blue. This whole, this whole school fits inside my heart. Sunlight streams through the windows. For it's made my love grow exponentially. Thoughts wander like the wind moves the trees. My life force blooms like a flower in May. A room in a sky among the clouds. Writes itself across my pages before I even know the words. And which of those words can embody a feeling we can't name? One hand in unison, ready to create words. A pencil is like a paintbrush, and paper is the canvas. Creating friendship and joy. Inside those walls, I have seen what learning is meant to be. All together in a box made from glass. Where I met people like me who weren't as far away as they had always seemed. Weightless, as we raise each other up. Art is to write, just as to write is art. Confessing a different love each day on paper. Letters arrange and become a cascade. We collect inside jokes as static does to fleece. My heart is in room 201. Storms outside the window and weathering the ones in our hearts. The loft is like a soul forever held in a delicate blue light. We weave our stories as a single being. We'll be leaving this home now. Our fabric is made of past experiences and current wisdom. But the sun will still be streaming through. Our creativity and passion form one giant quilt to cover ourselves when things get lonely. Words are the tie that bind us like a book. Next up, the media art students this year have been experimenting with cinema, the technical skills that go along with that, digital and darkroom photography, and creating short fiction and documentary video videos inspired by their own lives. Our media teachers, Lauren Bina, Bina and Gila Nikpe, are proud of the community the media students have created, how they advocate for each other, how they support each other, and their persistence to help each other with life both inside and outside of the classroom. This production will be a slideshow of sorts with mixed media woven throughout. So please direct your attention to the screen for a brilliant collection of artwork.
happy to be, in, to be introducing the best math teacher of all time, Amy Burge, to speak next. I had her for stats class last year, and I can attest to her wonderfully bright and authentic enthusiasm for life. As I mentioned in my speech just a little while ago, Amy is one of the many teachers here who puts all of her effort into helping us understand the material in her classes. She does so with patience and positivity. This year, she was chosen as faculty speaker among many other equally wonderful teachers because her positivity remained just as strong as it had ever been. Amy is a light when the world felt dark. And as students, we appreciate every kind word and all of the endless support that she has to offer. So please welcome Amy to the stage. I did tear up again this time for the end. I know. Okay. It's all good. I'm mushy. Parents, family, faculty, class of 2021! <laughs> you are finally here. You made it. Take a breath and enjoy the moment. It's hard to believe, isn't it? Graduation day has always seemed like such an asymptote. Am I right? Right? Okay, so for those of you who are, are hearing crickets and don't know what that means, uh, let me give you a little mini lesson. An asymptote is a boundary, usually a line, that you can get closer and closer to, but you never quite reach it. Um, some real world examples are things like uh, getting all your laundry done and put away. Uh, achieving financial euphoria, or um, having zero emails in your inbox. So close, and yet, nope. But here you are, the Purpich graduating class of 21. Or as I like to call you, seven times three! <laughs> All right, I know, enough with the math stuff, but just one more, uh, because this one is pretty cool. So um, take out your, your phones, and uh, does anyone have a phone with a calculator in it? I know you all do. Someone, someone, anyone? I can wait. I'm a teacher. All right, do it. Thank you, Elena's like, I got this. Uh, type in 43 times 47. Isn't it funny how they told us we were never going to have calculators in our pocket when we all went to school, and now they lied. Y'all do. All right, Elena, what do you got? 2021! Uh, that's amazing, isn't it? Okay, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> You're not going to, uh, so here, let me, let me just summarize that for you. Your graduation year is the product of the two largest consecutive prime numbers less than 50. That is pretty cool, <laughs> right? And you can say all the really big words and sound smart, so. Um, so for those of you who got lost in this, it's okay. Just smile and nod. It won't be on the test. You, you might have to create an art project based on it, but you can use your emotional confusion and angst. It's all good. Um, speaking of uncomfortable, I am wondering if you could all just do me a favor. Underneath your seats is a piece of cardboard and some markers. If you could just pull those out and draw something on it that represents you as a person, and then hold it up in front of your face, for the rest of the speech and try not to talk or laugh or, or breathe. Uh, if you have something to say, can you just put it in the chat? Um, Jay, can you monitor that for me so I don't miss anything? All right, thanks. Just kidding, there's no art supplies under your chairs. That's a really horrible joke in an art school, isn't it? I'm <laughs> I'm so sorry, but, but honestly, having actual faces in an actual auditorium, having actual emotional responses is so weird. 
even seeing your eyeballs over your mask is both refreshing and terrifying. <laughs> but we should have been ready for this. As artists, we know that we get our inspiration and our information from the most unlikely places because we are paying attention in ways that the average person is not. I know what's wrong, I have my glasses on. I'm like, why is it all blurry? <laughs> Everyone's like, Amy, you don't ever wear your glasses on the Zoom. You're right, I don't. Okay, here we go, now I got this. Um, so, parents, this is what you missed. In 1995, the movie Johnny Mnemonic came out, starring Keanu Reeves. You should have been paying attention. Let me read the synopsis that I found on the interwebs. <clears throat> the internet has grown to become an all-powerful presence. Conglomerate corporations rule the international marketplace and people struggle to define truth from the computer-generated falsehoods being spread. Too spot on. But wait, there's more. There's also a dangerous pandemic plaguing the world with scientists racing to find the cure. Google it. I plagiarized it. <laughs> this movie was based on the short story written by William Gibson in 1981. So in the future, pay attention. That's on all of us. I missed that one too. Hindsight and all. Oop, up, up. But no matter what, during this past year, we have all been through a lot. This one year has felt like an entire decade, not just a series of a few months. It was like there was some quantum disturbance that ascended from beyond and twisted the very essence of time, space, and reality. And just when we became comfortable with the new normal, bam, something else would happen. Or, or maybe we're just living in an emerging art piece. What's your artist statement? What experience do you want your audience to get from this? Every generation has their events that marks their historical timestamp. For my parents, it was the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor and the assassination of John F. Kennedy. For me and my generation, it was the explosion of the Space Shuttle Challenger in Florida and the attack on the Twin Towers in New York. And what do all these events have in common, aside from being completely American-centric? All of them can be linked with the question, where were you when you heard? Where were you when you knew that that thing had happened over there? But that's not the question that the future generations are going to ask you. You're going to be asked, did you catch the virus? How bad was it? Did you watch the George Floyd video? Most importantly, how did it change you? Because you have been changed. You had to. Because you survived and you struggled and you thrived and you found a way out the other side and now you are graduating. Because you like the generations that came before you are not defined by those events. Those are just time markers. Your generation has grown up with technology and is able to see the world in a way that prior generations could not. Social media has created amazing ways for all of us to connect with people that we know in the real world, in our real lives, and, those, and people who we've never even met in person. For you, this is completely normal. Your musical choices are much more broad and varied with YouTube and SoundCloud and Spotify. Your media options are practically limitless with Netflix and Amazon Prime and Disney Plus. And all of these have made you open to a more diverse world. Your generation, Gen Z, is the first to truly embrace gender neutral pronouns. You are the most racially diverse population in America despite what we see here in Minnesota. The innovations that you've seen in your lifetime have been astounding. The first iPhone in 2007, the first smartphone in 2004, 
3D printing, virtual reality, the birth control patch, e-readers, gene editing, digital assistance, a robot heart, and so much more. You have been surrounded by such amazing innovations. It's no wonder you're constantly plugged in. You might miss something. While I still have the mic, there's a few thoughts that I want to leave you with. First, be kind. Be kind to yourself and be kind to others. Say thank you. When you're not sure what to say when someone does something, just say thank you. Especially your parents. Don't be a bystander. Be an accomplice for the greater good. And most importantly, laugh. Laugh every day. In closing, I want to leave you with some homework. I know you thought that was done, but it's not. It's just not going to be graded in the same way that you're used to. Your generation has a lot of things to fix that those of us who came before you did some work on, but never actually completed the final project. Before I start the list, I'm going to say thank you. Poverty and homelessness, climate change, civil rights and racial discrimination, gender and queer inequality, health care availability, the refugee crisis, the income gap, gun violence, bullying, childhood obesity, hunger and food insecurity, and cryptocurrency. Now that last one, I'm still not sure exactly what it is, but apparently it's a problem, so if you could just get on that and fix it, that would be great. That's your assignment. Are you up for it? Sorry we left you with such a mess, but hey, you're artists. That's what you do. Take this mess and turn it into something breathtaking. Class of 2021, you are dismissed. Next, you're about to witness a short scene inspired by the work of Anton Chekhov, a Russian playwright born in the mid-19th century, the same playwright who inspired their last musical. The three seniors performing are Jordan, Katya, and Jack. Perpich welcomed Jordan as a new senior this year. Katya has been here for two years in theater, and Jack was a music student last year, which led him to explore theater this year. Tori, our sensational theater teacher, is recognized by all of the Perpich students to have a thundering personality and a particular humor that we all really do appreciate, both of which he uses to fuel his teaching in the theatrical arts. Prepare to be amazed.
coffee for those on the roadway or who smells like a burger. God, I just want things to go back to normal. I didn't sleep well. I was up till about 4 a.m. practicing the violin. Right when I finally got to sleep, the sun came up. The sun came up again. Hold still for a minute, you two. Let's get a picture of All right, all right, all right. <laughs> All right, say cheese. Cheese. All right, that's one. <laughs> Guys, come on, come on. All right, say cheese. Cheese. That's two. Group picture. For the visual artists this year, it's been a time of individual, artistic introspection to find the artist within. <laughs> Jeremy, Cameron, Sandy, Kate, and Catherine are the studio arts instructors here. All of them are diverse in their facets of ability, which include digital art, resin making, shrinky dinks, comics, sculpting, screen printing, jewelry, sewing, painting and drawing in the many ways that they come in. The representation for this year's senior class is a presentation, as a slideshow, of their work put together by the Viz teachers. These artworks are either the student's favorite piece or something they feel represents themselves. So take a proud look.
Last but not least, we have a music performance tonight. James Allen and Kevin Holstein are the music arts teachers. As exceptional musicians themselves, they've been working with their students on writing music, playing music, recording it, improvising it, and learning about its different styles. Music is another art that thrives as a collective. Through screens, they've still found a way to collaborate. Today, however, is their first live performance for an audience. So everyone, get excited to hear some magic, because that's what I've known Elena, Michelle, and John's music to be, and they wrote it together.
Good afternoon. My name is Con McCartan, and I'm proud to serve as the principal here at the Perfect Center for Arts Education. At this time in our program, we will present the members of the class of 2021 for graduation. Unlike perhaps other graduation ceremonies that you have been at before, I'm going to ask please that as each graduate's name is read, don't you dare hold your applause. <laughs> Madam Chair, Dr. Rick, each of these students are eligible to participate in this ceremony and upon verification of meeting all requirements of the Perfect Center for Arts Education in the state of Minnesota, will receive a diploma from the Perfect Center for Arts Education. It is my pleasure to have them presented to you. Students, both Dr. Rick and uh, Chair Brobeck will be at the bottom of the stairs to greet you as you go through and we, uh, Rebecca and I will be up on stage as we, as we rehearsed. The presentation of diplomas. Swear enough. Jordan Bowman. Katya Shamanovskaya. <laughs> Jack Strong. <laughs> Micah Brecky. Felix Gilsrud. <laughs> Sage Hartman. Demetra Hessenjager. <laughs> Roman Edward Matson. Carmen Mattingly. <laughs> Piper Metcha. Faith Minor. <laughs> Vegas Morales.
Kato Nazarian. Lonnie Quintero. Samantha Raymond. Emily Sathram. <laughs> Molly Sullivan. Vivian Daisy Swanson. Isabel Fostenson. Elizabeth Tan. <laughs> and Neva White Glasper. Thunderous applause here in a moment. If you're checking your program, we have reached the closing, and that is me. But before officially acknowledging our graduates, allow me to offer some thanks. Uh, graduates, as you well know, you do not get to a place like this alone. You have been supported along the way by family and your home communities. Your schooling up to your time at Perpich sets you up for success with us. And the amazing faculty and staff here have provided you with a remarkable, culminating experience to your K-12 education. Thanks also goes out to everyone who helped make this event happen. Your program lists the members of our graduation committee who planned out this ceremony. Personally, I want to thank Cindy Ladaney and Rebecca Bullen, uh, who shouldered the bulk of the work leading up to today. Graduates, will you join me in showing your appreciation for all these important people? Uh, some housekeeping items uh, at the uh, end of the ceremony, which we'll be wrapping up here just in a moment. The graduates will process out. I would just ask families just to wait until they do, and then you may follow them out. As we are the last ceremony, I won't say what I've been saying to the other ones, which is, you know, please don't linger too long because we need to let, get the next group in. Stay till sundown if you want. 
Uh, oh, except for those of you going to the gala, I suppose. You've got to get to the boat on time. 6.30. <laughs> Load the boat. We will leave without you. Uh, allow me to close as we started, using the same theme that I started our school year with when I addressed you as Cohort C during our orientations in the fall. You've heard this before. No one wanted to have a school year like this. We endured a pandemic that impacted how we interact, impacted the economic situation of a number of people, and was a source of anxiety for a number of people. Our school is just moments away from the epicenter of a racial reckoning in our country brought on by the death of George Floyd and Dante Wright at the hands of police. And yet I can say we are fortunate to have experienced this year together. Why? To be a community of artists, to be immersed in a learning environment that is infused in and informed by the arts, allows us to develop the kinds of skills to not just experience the world, but to examine it. It allows us not just to critique the world, but to have that critique serve as a catalyst for addressing improvements in each iteration that we create. The artist's response to the world is more than a reflection. It is also an expression of what might be and what can be. The skilled artist knows how we, to use negative space to bring forth the image that they hope for. They can see what they want to bring forth in their source material, and they do so by removing that which is not what they want to express. As Michelangelo said, I saw the angel in the marble, and I carved to set it free. We sought to build that community together here this year. One where we engaged learning, creation, relationship, and responsibilities in such a way that we could see the beauty in our challenged world and carve to set it free. It was true what the world told us, mask wearing and social distancing are effective ways to stay safe in a pandemic, but we also adhered to those guidelines because we saw the beauty in caring for one another's health and safety. It is true that in our world for far too long, people who look like me have constructed structures that systematically disadvantage people of color. But we could see the beauty in critiquing and restructuring those systems and the benefit that we all would realize because of it. Graduation ceremonies are referred to as commencements because they actually signal beginnings, not endings. Today we celebrate you commencing the next chapter of your lives where, hopefully, you will take your artistic mindset and see the beauty, the possibilities in the marble of whatever community you find yourselves in. Your work is no more complex and no more simple than to create the next iteration of our communities that builds on that which is beautiful and chisels away that which is not. So with that, class of 2021, commence. Will you please rise, turn, and face our audience? I am proud to present to you these graduates of Perpich Arts High School.